live Super Doppler 4 HD in that alert mode. We've got some very strong storms moving through right now. My biggest concern, the hail, and it's moving right toward downtown Greenville. Slicing it in half right there, you can see our hail core right there. That is a pronounced hail core reaching the ground. Here's the peak of our storm around midnight tonight. This is going to bring some very heavy snow totals to our area. Chris, uh, it looks like it's coming down mm -hmm. where you are. It's coming down real heavy outside, Michael and Carol. We're talking about some really heavy snowfall rates right now, and we're approaching the peak of the storm. Torrential rain with a lot of lightning associated with this right at rush hour. We've got everything down here. We've got music. We've got food. We've also got Boo Boo, the amazing dwarf rabbit, who's going to help me out with my weather here. Again, we do have confirmation now that it is an actual tornado. Piedmont, uh, West Pelzer, you need to be seeking shelter at this point. I mean, right on 85 here is directly where that rotation has been been uh, in North Lake and putting a track on it here. That rotating part of the thunderstorm or that line is uh, moving through Piedmont at 718. This is the line that is moving through through Anderson County. Now a part of this line is exceeding the other part. It's moving faster and that is creating a rotating part of that thunderstorm. A confirmed tornado I repeat, a confirmed tornado was located seven miles northwest of Anderson. This part of the green right here is the part that is outrunning the main line. And you've got wind that is starting to go the other way, hence the tornado warning and the rotation. The confirmed tornado was just south of Mason's Crossroad. We were on the air covering this as it moved through and touched down right here, very near Lake Hartwell. Look at the flare up of those brighter reds. Those are very tall thunderstorms right along the eye wall here. And this thing is really blowing up in intensity right here. My son Mason's going to join me here. He is enthralled with weather just about as much as I am. Mason, can you tell me what we use to track storms? What do you see us tracking storms? The for? radar. The radar, that's right. Are, are there any uh, storms right here? Uh, no. What's the weather like right now? Uh, sunny. There's another danger I want you to keep in mind tonight. Many of it take evening walks like my wife and I do. Be careful with the little ones and the concrete and the asphalt. I've got an infrared thermometer here just aiming at the asphalt in the shade. It's about 120 degrees. In the sun, it's as high as 150 degrees. This storm is moving over very warm waters up to 90 degree temperatures. And look at how those thunderstorms just really flare up and get taller. Uh, this is turning into a textbook hurricane and a major hurricane at that. They've given me the privilege of being the official gate opener and there they go. <laughs> the seniors get priority seating and here we are an hour and a half before kickoff and they're going to kind of man their seats if you will. It sure is John. We're going to see our impacts begin late tomorrow into Thursday. Let's talk about that because the latest model just came in. It shows a monster storm making landfall near Panama City over the next 24 hours. There's nothing in between it and the United States that will slow down its strength or its momentum. Here you go. Almost every single one of our computer models shows a path right across the state. The eye wall getting closer and closer to Wilmington, just 90 miles away, and the winds have actually picked up at the eye wall. All this area, Chris, is under tornado watch. And those tornadoes are going to be the concern as we move forward because on that right side of the track, you've got that twisting and turning. Bob, thank you so much. You guys, good luck here this week. Thanks. Yeah, uh, Larkins and Limoncello would be a great place to go. I can smell it kind of coming up this way. It is now moving through a very populated area of Greenville County, the Golden Strip, parts of Woodruff Road, Roper Mountain Road. You need to stay put. You need to treat this as if it were a tornado warning because of how severe this is. Yeah, not a bad night out here. We're at Sky 4 over downtown Greenville. Getting in closer to this storm, analyzing the hail, it has two-inch sized hail there in northern Polk County. I just want to show you how good the powder is out here. Now, if you've skied in North Carolina, at any time you know how bad the ice could be from time to time there is no ice whatsoever today we have about eight inches of fresh powder here and it continues to snow it's actually going to be the biggest threat today as hurricane arthur makes its pass about 60 miles off the coast we're going to see the rip currents here in the water be extremely dangerous let me break down what I think the roads will be icy for the mountains tomorrow, beginning as early as 9 a.m. For the upstate, more like uh, midday would be the earliest, and then really ramping up as we go into the evening hours tomorrow. We have high impacts on the roads Sunday and Monday. That's when the precipitation is falling or has already fallen, but the ground we're so frozen from the overnight that there'll be some big time road problems on Monday. Plus, we get more snow, albeit light to moderate snow, Monday into Monday afternoon. Tuesday, we get the refreeze yet again with lows right around 21 degrees. Let me show you what we're monitoring right now. Temperatures are all above freezing.
freezing, but colder air about to move in with a northeasterly breeze tonight as that wedge gets locked in. Here we go. Let me show you the latest computer model, which just came out at the top of the hour. We've got rain moving in tomorrow by 11 a.m. for the upstate, but we're right there at 34, 35 degrees. For the mountains, it's snow from the beginning, and it continues to be snow. That rain snow line is going to try to creep down the mountain into Saturday evening. You see it just north of Greenville. It's right over downtown Spartanburg. Look what happens as we go through the day on Sunday. By 7 a.m., we're waking up to sleet and freezing rain along the I. 85 corridor and a lot of sleet. This is going to be very heavy. Sleet is a problem because it doesn't melt as quickly as snow once it hits a road. So you can imagine throwing up some crushed ice on the road. It just sits there. That's the same story. Uh, now, north of I-85, northern Greenville County, it's a lot of snow. Northern Pickens County, northern Oconee County. Now, look what happens uh, as we go through the day on Sunday. More snow for the mountains, a mix across a good bit of the upstate here, and then some warmer air tries to move in as the system moves on out. Now, we'll take a break Sunday night, most of the precipitation done, but then we'll see another little light batch move through early Monday morning. When it's all said and done, ice a big concern right there during that battleground of snow to the north and rain to the south. We'll get uh, some damaging ice possible here. On top of that, I'm monitoring wind gusts that could approach 35 miles per hour early Sunday morning in these areas. So power outage is a real concern. You need to prepare now for a way to stay warm. Make sure your propane tanks are fueled. Uh, make sure you have some extra blankets just in case the power does go out and have some flashlights handy. As far as snow totals, this is sleet and snow, a dusting to an inch south of 85, one to four inches around downtown Greenville to Spartanburg. It goes up quickly north of there from northern Oconee, Pickens, Greenville and Spartanburg County, as much as 48 inches near the North Carolina border, 8 to 12 inches. And then Asheville and Hendersonville, 12 to 20 inches. This is going to be a big storm impacting many of us here. We're in the alert mode Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with wintry precipitation falling each day. High of only 36 there on Monday. So whatever slush is on the ground, Monday will refreeze with a low of 24 at GSP on Tuesday morning. You see the yellow icon there. We have that as well on Wednesday as our lows fall to 21 in the upstate, lower teens in the mountains. So the black ice, a big concern through Wednesday.